Namaste everyone, this is Amanda and this is the third part of our handstand series and this is all about flexibility in the hamstrings which you don't really need to do a handstand, I mean you'll end up if you're very inflexible in your hamstrings you can still get up there and you can still hold it but the flexibility in the hamstring is, is handstand is that sort of like that cherry on the top. I'll show you what I mean. If you aren't flexible in the handstand, but you've got all your other thing, ducks in a row and you're not scared, you can kick up and you can get your handstand no problem. But if you're flexible in your hamstrings, that is the key to the presses and the floats. Do you see this? So this one where you get your bottom over your head and you can kind of float up. That will only happen once you can go quite flexed and stretched hamstrings. So let's give them a go. The way we're going to start, we haven't done salutes to the sun in this series. We're going to do some salutes and we're going to focus on our lunges. So let's raise our arms up on the inhale and fold down on the exhale. Our first salute is just going to be a very little lunge. Just bounce around a little, chest up, and then come to child's pose. Let's go through our knees, chest, chin, cobra pose, and then downward dog, exhale. Right foot forward, and let's kind of wiggle around at the hips, Get already start to feel that connection between the hamstring and the glutes. Um, open, get more movement, and then bringing the back foot forward, exhale and then coming all the way up, inhale, and then hands to prayer. Inhale, exhale. This time the left leg is going to come back. Let's focus a little bit more on what we're doing to get open in this area. So we're gonna bring the hands to the hips. I, I cheat a little bit, I bring, it's a little bit unorthodox, but I bring my knee over the toes, only because I've got a very stiff back. When I do that, I get a lot more movement through the hip flexors and I'm stretching, I'm getting through the hamstring opening in my front leg and lengthening in the back leg of the quad. And then I'm bringing my arms up. Few moments. Great, so hands down and come to your downward dog this time. Roll into plank. Our easy way to push down is knees, chest, chin, or you can come to a chaturanga, exhale. Upward dog, inhale and downward dog. So let's stretch out the hamstrings here. You can pedal, so if I bend my right knee and bring the heel off the ground and ground the left heel, get a lot of stretch through the left hamstring and then alternate. I remember the little tricks when my heels were like three millimeters off the ground, my teacher came along and told me to push the foot down with the other leg. So I kind of clamped it between my toe and the second toe and put my foot down. Then the other side, great. Okay, from here, let's bring the left foot forward, right knee grounds, and wiggle around. Good, until you get that opening and then bring the arms up. Good. Great, okay, from here, come to downward dog and we'll go through our chaturangas again. Shoulders over knuckles. Remember, we've been working on our shoulders and our core. So we're aiming that shoulder over the knuckles, pushing down, upward dog, inhale, and downward dog. Now from here, if you want to walk your feet, or the, the, we want to get that shoulder and core activation as well. So maybe for our first one, we will walk just heel toe, sort of like ambulate slowly all the way to the top so you could almost feel like you could float off and then exhale head down come all the way up to standing inhale and hands to prayer exhale next salute inhale arms up and exhale palms down let's bring our right leg back we'll come into our lunge great opening and then we'll come into the lizard so if you pick up your back leg and wiggle forward and back there are so many different levels of lizard you can do you can come onto your forearms if you are comfortable with that hamstring opening lower your back knee down and twist towards the knee 
If you're up for it, bend that back leg and then stretch. You've got quads happening on your right leg, you've got glutes and hamstrings on your left. And a nice twist in the middle, good. From here, we'll move back to downward dog, exhale. Roll to plank, push down, up dog, and down dog. Three breaths, work on what you need to do to ground your heels and stretch your hamstrings. And two. One, now from here, bring your, um, what is it, we had our left leg, is it? Here we go, yes. Feel like I've done this side, no? Have I done this side? I can't remember. Um, raising the arms up. I'm about to feel like I've done that side. So we're going to do the right side. <laughs> and coming forward first. And then from here, coming into our lizard. Good. And then onto the forearms. If you can bring your back leg to the ground and twist towards your right this time and bend the knee and start to stretch. Great. Okay, from here, Back to downward dog, exhale. And then plank on the inhale and push down. Upward dog, downward dog. Okay, we'll just do a few more hamstring stretches in the flow. Raise your left leg in the air behind you. And let's try to keep it straight as we bring it forward, toe to the wrist, and then bring it back and forward and back and now I'm going to plant that foot forward ground the other heel down now you can bend your knees if you need I'm always a big fan of the belly gluing to the thigh with a the knee bent then a pose that looks like this I don't think this is a great forward bend I will get more stretch in my hamstrings if I bend the front leg eventually when you're flexible enough you can start to straighten it but don't overlock activate the knee muscles so that you're protecting your ligaments and your joints. This is Pasvottanasana, extended leg stretch. And I'm going to then shift forward into standing split. If you want that press handstand, you also need to master that standing split. If you're not into, close to the standing split, the pulses will work and the bent support leg will work too. It's a great stretch. Great, so from here, I'm going to plant that right leg down. I'm going to bring the left leg back and stretch. Now we're going to raise that right leg in the air behind and float forward, toes to wrist and back. And forward, knees can be bent if you need. Depends on your leg length really. And last one, I'm gonna plant the foot forward and fold. Remember, bent knees is fine, but you wanna lengthen the belly over the leg and feel that stretch and the connection between the hamstring and the glutes. Moving, shifting the weight forward into standing split. Great. And let's come back to downward dog. So if you like, you can slowly walk like we did before to the top of the mat, or you could give your jumping handstand a go. You can float up, and then coming down. Exhale, head down. Remember, we've got this rabbit style um, arm gesture to release the neck, bring your head up and down. And then from here, we're going to sit down, lie on our back, we're going to do a few more leg stretches. So I'm a big fan of just being relaxed in this pose. I bring a block underneath the head, extending my left leg down. I'm going to belt the right foot. So you want this alignment. So if your knee is going in towards the left armpit, roll the hip down. The right knee should go up into the right armpit. 
flex the foot and stretch. Try and have the leg straight and let's start to observe what happens length through the hamstring and the calf. We need to contract the muscles through the shin, the knee and the quads and bring the head up towards the shin. Staying till you get that length. Three or four more breaths. Aligned. And two. One. Okay, now lowering that part of the bat leg down, bending the left knee and belting the foot, getting that resistance. Once again, knee in line with armpit. If you can reach the foot, that's fine, but otherwise the resistance of the belt's quite good. Head to shin if you can. And lengthening down. Great. Okay. Next hamstring stretch. We're going to um, try and do a split up the wall. So if you are just learning, your split might look like this. As you get more stretchy, you want your split to go quite deep. And then eventually, no matter where you are, you can work into your first inversion and then split that leg down, try for the split again, and then bring the other leg down. So once again, I'll show you the easier option. You're gonna bring your support leg. We're changing legs. You can bring it in front and you can bend your knees. You can then from there, once you've felt that stretch as much as you can, you can then try to lift the leg, it's gonna work. Or if you're getting more stretchy and more stretchy, work the split in. and then coming all the way up. Get used to breathing and being upside down. Your core is working, your shoulders are working, your hamstrings are working. Good. See if you can walk down the wall slowly and with control. Should we add one more hamstring stretch? This is everybody's favorite. Boys hate, men hate this pose. It's called the splits. But this is a surefire way to get as deep into the hamstrings as you can. I think a good way to open up before you get into the splits, if you're finding it hard, is this kind of lizard style variation on the heel and trying to bounce and get down deeper. Eventually, everything working together. The last parts of the flexibility of the hamstrings is getting stronger. I squeeze all my muscles up to my glutes. I scissor them up. I don't flop my muscles or else my ligaments will get, will sort of get too soft. Once you've done one leg, you go to the other side, maybe onto the blade of, the, of that foot and the knee out, and then start to crawl it further and further forward until you find a little bit of joy. You can actually have your hips on a bolster or legs on a block, if you like, a little bit of height. So where is this going to lead us? Why are we doing splits to learn handstands? So let's have a look at what's happening now. You've done your core work. Your shoulders are firing up full of strength. What we need now are really, really open hips. And we press into the ground and then up we come. For the most comfortable handstands you can do. And bring that leg down. So if you're not comfortable with the press handstands yet, you just work on these splits, kicking up as high as you can, and the pressing and jumping. Pressing and jumping. I think learning handstands is way more exercise, actually, way more cardio and aerobic exercise than actually nailing the handstand, where you actually end up being quite static. So the working towards is a lot of fun. So finally, what we can work on is a straddle handstand. We can bring our hands down and start to float. Got to press quite strong. My shoulders have to really engage. 
hold on. Here we go. Let's see. Let's see if you can stretch your legs. And then coming down. So there's a lot to practice there, all of it, whether you do the core first, the shoulders or the legs, go backwards and forwards between the videos and keep working on them until it all works together and you'll be floating in no time. <laughs>